Hello everyone, Cynix here, and this is the continuation to my trucking around video. So in part one, I went over perspective and how to use it to create really basic industrial design thumbnails. And I also fumbled around in SketchUp and made this little simple base for our truck designs, which I then took screenshots of from different angles and compiled them onto this image. And I think at the end of that video, I started filling them out with different truck designs. And you can see here that I filled out most of them, uh, a lot of them off camera, off video. But I'm going to do this last one on video again, just to kind of go over what we talked about last time. Uh, so you can see I quickly made some little perspective lines just to help me out while I filled in the rest of that. Because my base model really only covers say the lower part of the front cab it doesn't cover anywhere where the window would be uh, the windshield or the side windows uh, but anytime you have two lines going in the same direction and parallel to the ground plane uh, you can use that to deduce your vanishing deduce your vanishing point and uh, with that information you can also add other perspective lines and basically you can keep everything in the same perspective now usually you can just do this in your head uh, for the sake of the video I kind of drew out some lines uh, but basically you can just kind of eyeball you can look at the two lines you've established from the model that you know um, are parallel to each other and you can use that to get all other information you need when you're doing a thumbnail so you can see I'm kind of fumbling around here trying different designs for the front of the truck because I feel like that's where my main um, deviations are going to come from. And I think that's really just because this style of truck focuses so much on function rather than form that they all tend to look very similar except in the headlights and the front where you can actually mess around with design elements without changing the function. Now, if you do mess around with design elements, such as the uh, thumbnail right above it, you'll see you get a completely different vehicle altogether. That one looks more like a van rather than a truck. Uh, but it's fun to, you know, at least experiment a little bit because you can see it being converted into something else. Uh, but I'm giving this one a very basic mini truck kind of truck bed you can see its height is a little over halfway up the door and that seemed to be the I don't know average median height for these uh, mini truck truck beds and if you're not familiar with mini trucks uh, they're very common in places like Asia but we don't really have them here in America uh, maybe that's why I was fascinated enough to actually make a bunch of thumbnails and a design based on them uh, but anyway, here you can see I finally finished that thumbnail and I took it in and blew it up in Painter. And now I'm just going to start using the Thick and Thin Pen, which is my standard painting brush here in Painter 12. And I'm just going to start with a couple things. The first thing I wanted to do is just drop a shadow underneath it. Um, so you can quickly find out where you want to place your shadow by just dropping some... Uh, lines from the truck and using your perspective to quickly make a box under your object that lines up with the ground and I just moved it just a little bit because our image kind of looks like the Sun is stronger on the side that's facing us so I just moved this shadow back into the side just a little bit to kind of line up with that lighting scheme the next thing I wanted to do was get rid of that boring white uh, paint job we had going on. So I thought it would be fun to bring in a seafoam green style color. Um, and the main reason for that is just because you don't see it in new vehicles. And I thought that would kind of date this uh, vehicle, make it look more old, maybe like a 70s or 80s style, back when they might have actually made vehicles in a seafoam green. Um, so that gives it a little more personality and helps you tell a little story about how old it is. Um, and I think that will help out a little bit. Um, and also you don't want things to be that strong digital white that you had uh, before. Obviously, when I refer to digital white, I'm referring to that pure white that only exists on computers and you won't really find in real life. And the same thing goes for black. You never want to have that pure digital black in your paintings um, just because it looks unnatural. You don't see that in real life. You only see it on computers. Uh, but anyway, 
I think the other main thing I should talk about is that when you're doing a industrial design piece, even one like this, where you have absolutely no background, um, it just looks like it's existing in this white void. And you know, that's fine for just showing off a design. But even when you have that uh, setting, you still need to kind of plan out an environment in your head. And the reason for that is because when you're dealing with reflective textures such as metal, uh, you always need to place an environment in them. And that's just going to help sell the believability of them. You don't want it to exist in this white void um, in terms of its reflections. You want its reflections to reflect a world um, even though it's in this white void. So in my head, I just decided that I would do a, I don't know, like say a dusty field, um, maybe some trees on the horizon or some buildings on the horizon, a dusty field with a nice blue sky. So that way, anytime I am reflecting um, or showing a surface that is facing upward, such as the roof, um, I'm gonna take my seafoam green and I'm gonna add some blue and some uh, higher values to it and it's gonna make it look like it's reflecting a sky and you can see here I'm also messing with the windows real fast and the best way to kind of show um, a window is to reflect the sky obviously the windshield is facing upward at an angle so that's just gonna reflect the sky and the side uh, window there is reflecting outward um, kind of at a very straight perpendicular angle so I'm gonna draw my whole environment in there and after I do that I'm just gonna lower the opacity a bunch I did that on a separate layer I don't normally work on a separate layer, but you know, for the sake of showing you what is going on in my head, I thought that would be a great touch just to, to show you on a separate layer. You know, you make the environment and then you just quickly um, lower the opacity and that creates much more realism in your rendering. Uh, so you can notice like on the bottom of the truck where it might slope um, inward a little bit, uh, my shadows have a slightly more earthy brown tone and the shadow under the truck itself is also a more brown earthy tone. So that all helps to sell this as a realistic object. And I am doing the exact same thing on the wheels. You can see obviously wheels are made of metal, so they have a lot of reflective qualities to them. And you know, they might even be made of chrome or usually a more shiny silver metal they aren't painted over. Um, so you have the blue reflections on any place that is facing upward toward the sky and the more earthy, ref earthy reflections on any place that is facing downward. And um, I also did some brown um, around the edges of the tire and that's not because it's reflecting upward, uh, but obviously tires are very matte and I just wanted to show that it had some wear on it. So it's obviously driven out to this dirt field that doesn't exist. Um, so we're going to show that by putting a lot of dirt on the tires. Maybe it drives around the dirt a lot. So it's got that nice brown wear to it. Uh, so that really will add a lot of personality to anything you do. So uh, that's just kind of my standard advice that will instantly improve the quality of your presentations in industrial design uh, by a whole lot. Always think of an environment. Uh, we kind of tackled that very heavily when we did the uh, shiny mech video because uh, that was really all about just showing an environment even though there wasn't one um, visible outside the mech. Um, it's the same thing that goes for this. So we have an environment. It's a dusty field with a blue sky and we're just going to show that off without actually showing it off. You know, it's, it's kind of that subtleness to art that makes all the difference. Uh, so you can see here, um, I'm just kind of filling out everything. I've really tried to simplify um, the line work uh, the same way you would do if you were painting over a, uh, a line work, say, of a portrait like I did for this cell portrait. Uh, you just want to get rid of all the line work as much as possible and leave just values. So you have light values or the standard sea foam for anything that's facing you. And, you know, then obviously your shaded tones, uh, earth tones for anything facing downward. And basically you're just creating form. 
And you can see here, I got really lazy with the wheel. And sometimes it's fine to just cheat and quickly copy one wheel and put it over the other one. And you can paint over it a little bit just to give it a little variety, but that will save you a lot of time. And that's really all you need when you're just doing quick presentations. You don't wanna waste a lot of time where you don't have to. You know, if there's no, there's no real benefit to spending the time and you can just do something quick like that to, to save yourself the trouble, then, you know, it, it'll probably actually look better just because you know that it matches the other wheel. Uh, so it will also create a lot of believability. Uh, so I think that's about it. You can see I filled the truck bed in with that seafoam as well. Um, and I, yeah, that was about it. So let's move on because I decided just for funsies that I would also render out a second one. So I liked that little van that was above our truck thumbnail. So I'm just gonna quickly do the whole process all over again. So you can see dropping the ground plane, um, dropping a shadow onto the ground plane using perspective lines once again and moving it slightly. And this van is gonna be just a nice soft kind of off-white eggshell color and I think that looks very believable that's a very standard color for a van you know a very I don't know questionable color but very standard nonetheless um, and we're just gonna go through the same whole process so I decided to go with the same um, environment once again going over it hammering it into your head I guess uh, but that dirt um, so every reflection facing downward or every plane facing downward is going to be reflecting a earthy shadow and everything that's facing upward, the highlight is always going to be leaning toward the bluish side. Uh, so that will, once again, just makes everything look way better than it would otherwise. As you can see here, just quickly adding some of that brown to the downward facing areas. Um, and I feel like I sped this one up a lot more, but it's basically just the same process. And in fact, the more you do these, the better you get. So you can see the window thing. Uh, I could talk about it a little bit more. You can see there's, I added even a little more depth than this one and it came out better. So every time you do something like this, um, your process is gonna get better. It's gonna look better. And everything you do is just gonna, you know, keep getting better. I guess that's what improvement is all about. Uh, but I really like the way the windows look on this one versus the last one. Uh, the last one had some really nice stuff going on, but this one's just nice and clean. Uh, and I added a little more uh, color to the interior. You could see the the little uh, bench seat there with the headrests have a nice little tan um, color to them, which seems very believable. Uh, I don't think I added any color to the ones of the last truck. Uh, so I'm, I fumbled around with this little side skirt part for a little bit on the bottom of the side here. And that's just because um, I couldn't remember what would look good. Uh, but um, after, you know, you know it, it tends to go that after you mess around with something, you find yourself uh, looking at it a lot more closely the next time you see a truck. So I was out driving around earlier and I was studying the little side skirts of every vehicle I came across. And I realized that they're all extremely simple. So um, in the future, when I do a bottom side skirt part, I'll do, just keep it as simple as possible. Uh, so anyway, I just did these quick, simple wheels. Once again, same process as last time, copying, pasting. And I think that's about it for this van. So once again, I did two quick images. Uh, we have finished illustrations that look pretty believable. Um, and we made them just by using a quick 3D model and then quickly painting over it. And it also just illustrates how incredibly easy things become if your thumbnails have proper perspective in them. So always try to do your thumbnails with proper perspective and it's just gonna make your whole life so much easier because I didn't really have to spend any time rendering these. It was just such a fast process and they look um, relatively decent. Um, they, they seem believable to some extent. Um, I feel like this one's wheels are a bit, I don't know, a bit horrible. They're not that great, but the windows on this van are great. The wheels on the other one are better. And overall, this was a fun process. And I hope you learned a little something about rendering vehicles, rendering all industrial design, really. All these, all these little tricks and things apply to everything. Uh, but I guess that's about it, so thanks for watching, and I'll be back soon with more videos.